greetings and yeah yeah I know no funky music to start off with um tank builds they are beyond versatile and I'm kind of getting low-key annoyed with seeing random people that I'm joining playing tank builds that are clearly just copy and paste of someone else because there's one thing that really, really annoys me. Because they're all using Foundry Bulwark. And they're all using Armor Regen. I'm not saying Armor Re Regen is a bad thing on a tank build. But if you're using Foundry Bulwark. You um, really, really don't need it. I'm not using it on the build that I'm currently showing here. I've got crit damage and crit chance. And I do a rather entertaining amount of damage as you can see um, and I just run around tanking stuff while shooting things in the face of a liberty I'm not particularly too fast anything you do need to be mindful of is when you are playing tank you are only tanky from the front so you kind of need to pick and choose your battles because if you show your ass for too long uh, it gets a little bit chewed up and you end up looking like friggin I don't even know. A used, used and abused bit of ham. So, what we're going to do here today is just go over some templates. Um, mostly going to be showing sort of the builds and the way I run them. But I just want to throw these out there to give you, you guys ideas on how you are able to utilize your tank builds depending on your surroundings, who your teammates are, if you're solo, how many teammates you have. What you're doing this is legendary and to be honest i'm just i'm actually just chilling um i will show what i mean by pick and choose your battles when you are playing tank in a little bit anyway this build that i'm running here is four piece foundry as you can see i've basically got crit chance crit chance on the mask i'm using a douglas and harding backpack with crit chance crit damage crit chance i'm running adrenaline rush I'm running the point man. I'm fully aware the Vanguard buff doesn't really apply in solo. I mainly use it for the invulnerability. And then crit da chance, crit damage, crit damage on the remainder of my foundry pieces, the gloves, the holster, the knees. This is all about rotating your shield. Adrenaline Rush is providing us with over armor, so we need to kind of... Uh, stay within close proximity and it generally does help defend against being slapped around from the back but the vanguard is mainly there if our shield is taking too much damage say we've got one too many heavies in front of us we can quickly just put our shield down the adrenaline rush as well as just the overall regen that four piece foundry bulwark gives us covers us for that second or two that it's down we can then put the shield back up it's invulnerable for five seconds this now means we can even get the hell out of dodge or finish off the heavy. It's pretty damn simple, really. All of these builds are running Foundry Bulwark, in case you can't tell. This one's got Memento Backpack and Douglas and Harding Chest, and we're running Intimidate. Uh, just because while that buff is active, we can get a little bit of damage. You might also notice that the mask has changed from armor to weapon damage because we're getting our tier 6 shield from Memento. Uh, this build is quite weird and unique because you are really, really relying on getting those memento stacks, which basically means I would suggest playing this solo. Um, while you have those stacks active, you actually do do a surprisingly large amount of damage. But overall, I honestly really wouldn't recommend that build. It's just something more based on heroic rather than legendary really but it's just another option you could throw out there memento and point man this one's pretty damn explanatory self-explanatory rather we are still running that one red core on our foundry just to make up a little bit more damage because we don't need it we're still at the uh, skill tier six for our shield if you really do feel you need more armor go for it but you you really really don't need it it's pointless Again, just to reiterate, Vanguard is essentially two buffs. Upon deploying your shield, 
Your shield is invulnerable for 5 seconds, as well as allies gain a percentage of your armour for 20 seconds. The cooldown for this is 25 seconds. You cannot, outside of the raids, get the bonus armour. You will get the invulnerable shield, but you can't get the bonus armour. So you kind of have to play a bit tactically with the old armour front. This one is more geared towards team play. We are back to using uh, the armor on the Foundry Bulwark piece. We've got Douglas and Harding, because pistol damage, we're using a pistol by the way, um, with Protector, and then Point Man again. This basically means that we are providing a hell of a lot of overshield to our friends and family and anyone that just needs one of those lovely blue cuddles. This actually does work really, really well in Legendary if you are playing in a team. Because you can basically just situate yourself in the middle of enemies and just be like, I don't care, dude. Um, on occasion, put your shield down just to rebuff it. Um, you yourself will be affected by Protector as well. It's not the most amount of overshield, but it's just enough to see you through with the Foundry Bulwark buff to... Uh, be able to put your shield down in front of a heavy and then get it back up and you'll still have plenty of armor to carry on and just you know be that awesome awesome tanky support that your team deserves uh a lot lower in damage and i do not recommend playing in solo because everything will take absolutely friggin ages because you're basically just there just to try and support the team with overshields especially if they're running intimidate let them go nuts be fine promise what is this clown doing back here? I hate these drone bitches. This one is like the anti-death tank build. Um, just in case you've got one of those weirdos that dies all the damn time. Also someone who likes using perfect glass cannon. Uh, you still have a hell of a lot of armour. You're providing protector when taking damage. So they're getting a bit of overshield. And you've also got tardigrade. So when their armour does get absolutely annihilated because they're running perfect glass cannon they get a healthy chunk of your armor. This actually works pretty damn well, as long as they're not running vigilance, because the idea is, is you basically provide them with enough armor to go absolutely mental for about, I don't know, 30 seconds, and not have to worry about their health, armor, bloody bloody blah, blah. All they have to do is just put rounds down range, and all you have to do as their lovely supporting tank that you are is just take a beating. Take a beating like a 50s housewife. Probably can't say that now, nowadays. But yeah, um, I just said it, so... Oh well. Oh, look, we've got another one back here. What is going on? This isn't hide and seek, love. Jesus Christ. Then, last in my list, but certainly not least, is running Adrenaline Rush with Intimidate. This is probably one of the easiest ones to farm for, especially when my wife isn't me. Nice. Uh, if you really want, you can go with um, Matador for Perfect Adrenaline Rush, which provides you with just a little bit more armor, but you do lose a little bit of damage because you've got 5% weapon damage versus 20% pistol damage. Simple math. Guarantee someone's going to say Matador's better. Um, all depends on how you want to play. But these are just a few examples of what you can do as a tank. I've seen one tank run the Vanguard Protector, which is where I got the idea from. I've no idea who this person was, was, but they were running Vanguard Protector. And then in certain situations, like the boss room in DUA Legendary, he swapped to Overclock and just started throwing his Artificer Hive everywhere. And he was remaining in range so that he could get the buff we had people running skill builds or whatever else they could get the buff and you got 25% reload speed and the longer you were there you got like more cooldown reduction and I'm pretty sure that's how overclock works I've never really used it before never seen anyone use it before but people were like spamming seeker mines and oh it was it was a horrible horrible mess it was glorious like everything died in like two minutes it was probably the quickest I've ever done the uh boss room in DUA and all because this guy just went overclock, dropped my hive and he just started wandering around. It's glorious, absolutely glorious. It's quite fun to watch as well. Um, 
as well as when he was doing his shield rotations to reproc Vanguard, he was standing next to the Hive to do it, and he was able to get it up really quick and easy. It was quite interesting. Never seen it before, so I'm mentioning it now. Whoever that person is, if that was you, um, dude, you're a hero. Uh, but yeah, just really just wanted to show a variety of different shield tank builds that you can use. There are so many combinations. Don't just go with what you see on YouTube. Ironically, you're probably seeing this on YouTube if you know about this. Um, but let's just experiment, try things out, test things. What the game's all about, right? Anyway, it is at this point where I would say have fun, good luck, don't die, it's bad for the health. However, I really wanted to show you guys what I mean by pick your battles. One of these heavies is basically nearly dead, but my shield's taking a bit of a uh, beating, so I can't really push him, but he's being a sly git, running off to the side. So to get to him, I've got to get past his little girlfriend there. And Big Bertha's a meanie and she keeps bullying me, so um, I try taking them out at range. Pistol's not too good at range. So I thought I would do something really, really, really clever just to show how you don't pick your battles. And I went outside. Now, I could probably tank two heavies okay as long as I do my rotations properly and I've at least got somewhere quick and easy and simple to hide. The problem is, with tank builds, you're only tanky from the front. And there's always, always, always a pesky sniper just hiding out of view. So when you decide to do your little push and you haven't done your fives and twenties, check your surroundings, see that he's cracked now as well. Move in to finish him off. I can do it, I swear. Okay, maybe not. No, I'm getting shot from the sides. It's okay, I'll be safe. Never mind. Pick your battles, people. Absolutely pick your battles.